I'm going to show you how to plot f at x equals 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. We call this category a rational function, and in particular, this rational function is a linear function divided by another linear function. First thing we're going to do is identify the domain. The domain is x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0, and otherwise x is a real number. We know that x plus 3 can't be equal to 0 because if it was, we would be dividing by 0, which is not defined. So that means that x is not equal to negative 3. And from our knowledge of reciprocal functions, this gives us a vertical asymptote. So we've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. I've got a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So our function is not going to, to ever reach this line here. Now let's consider as we approach our asymptotes from the left and from the right. So again, f at x is 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. And I want to look as x approaches, I've got my asymptote at negative 3. So I want to consider as x approaches negative 3 from the right. So I'm looking at values slightly, slightly larger than negative 3. So let's consider my function at negative 2.5. And that's going to give us 3 times negative 2.5 plus 1. All over negative 2.5 plus 3. So that's negative 6.5 divided by positive 0.5. So that's going to be negative 13. So I've got a negative number as I approach my asymptote from the right. So that means that as x approaches negative 3 from the right, y approaches negative infinity. So when we plot that out, here's my asymptote. And as I approach from the right, it's going to approach negative infinity. It's going to look like that. Now as I approach from the left, So as x approaches negative 3 from the left, so this is going to be values that are a little more negative than negative 3, like negative 3.1. That's going to give me That's going to give me a negative divided by a negative. It's going to give me a positive. So as x approaches negative 3 from the left, y is going to approach positive infinity. You see, we're dividing by numbers that are smaller and smaller as we approach negative 3 from the left. But we will consistently have a negative divided by a negative. It's going to give us a positive number. And that positive number is going to become larger and larger as we get closer and closer to negative 3. Now let's consider our end behavior. So 
our picture so far is we've got an asymptote at negative 3. So over here at negative 3, we've got a vertical asymptote. And as we approach it from the right, as x approaches negative 3 from the right, y approaches negative infinity. So that means we have something that looks like this. It's approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches negative 3 from the left, y approaches positive infinity. So as we're going this way, that's approaching positive infinity. So we approach negative 3 from the right, we get this large negative number. As we approach negative 3 from the left, we get this large positive number. However, what we do not know at this time is the end behavior. So as x goes towards negative infinity and as x goes towards infinity, what y value is this approaching? So we've got f at x is 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. And I would like to know what's going on as x approaches infinity, as we get larger and larger values. So let's plug in some larger values. Let's look at f at 100. If you consider f at 100, you have 300, so you have 3 times 100 plus 1 over 100 plus 3, which gives us 301 over 103. And that number is approaching 3. It's pretty close to 3. It's 2.9. And you can verify this for yourself. As I put larger and larger values in for x, we're going to get numbers that become closer and closer to 3. So if I was to look at, say, f at 1,000, that's going to be 3,001 divided by 1,003. 3,001 divided by 1,003 gives us 2.992. So f at 100 is 2.92. f at 1,000 is 2.992. And as we increase our our x values, we're going to get closer and closer to 3, but notice we're always below it. So the way we describe this end behavior is we would say as x approaches infinity, y approaches 3 from below. So that negative, this negative here indicates that we're approaching 3, but we're approaching 3 from less than 3, from just to the negative side of 3. So we're getting to the 2.9, 2.99, and so on. So we now have a slightly more complete picture of what this looks like. We've got our asymptote here at negative 3, but we also have a horizontal asymptote at positive 3. And remember, we had We had, as x approaches negative 3, y approach negative infinity. And now we have, as x approaches infinity, y approaches positive 3, giving us a vertical asymptote here. So this is my vertical asymptote at positive 3. And this is my, sorry, my horizontal asymptote at positive 3. This is my 
vertical asymptote at negative 3. And as I approach, as x approaches infinity, y approaches 3 from below. As x approaches negative 3 from the right, y approaches negative infinity. So it looks like that. Now, as x approaches negative infinity, you put in some values, and you're going to find, I'll let you plug in the values for yourself, plug in negative 100, negative 1,000, and so on. And what you're going to find is, as you put in larger and larger negatives, you get a value that's closer and closer to 3, but from above. Let me, let me do a couple of them for you here. I'll do at least one. So remember f at x is 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. And let's put in negative 100. That's going to give us negative 300 plus 1 over negative 100 plus 3. So that's going to give us negative 299 divided by negative 97. which is going to give us positive 3.08. So what's happening is as we get larger and larger negative numbers, as we, get, as we put in larger and larger negative values for x, we get closer and closer to 3, but we always stay just above it. So we have a horizontal asymptote here at y equals 3. We have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 3. And with our asymptotic behavior, as we get closer and closer to negative 3, y becomes a larger and larger negative. As we get closer and closer to positive 3, sorry, as x approaches infinity, we get closer and closer to positive 3 from just below it. So we, we figured this out by putting in values like f at 100. We figured this out by putting in values like f at negative 2.99. x approaches negative 3 from the left, y approaches infinity, and again we figured this out by putting in values like f at negative 3.01, and as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 3 from above. So you put in values like f equals negative 100 to figure that much out. Okay, so I've got my vertical asymptote here. My horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 3. And then we go to plot this function. f at x, that is y, is equal to 3x plus 1 divided by x plus 3. And as you can see, we have a vertical asymptote at negative 3, a horizontal asymptote at positive 3. As x approaches infinity, y approaches 3 from below. As x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 3 from above. And as x approaches negative 3 from the right, y approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative 3 from the left, y approaches infinity. Let me show you a, a shortcut way to figure all these things out. So let's say you're dealing with a problem like this. f at x is equal to 3x plus 1 over x plus 
3. Let's find our vertical asymptotes. You can't divide by 0, so you have a vertical asymptote of x equals negative 3. And now let's consider our end behavior to get our horizontal asymptotes. So our end behavior is based on x approaching infinity or minus infinity. Now, here's the observation you make. As x approaches infinity, adding 1 to infinity or adding 3 to infinity doesn't really do all that much. What you're basically getting is 3 infinities divided by 1 infinity. And that approaches a value of 3. So my horizontal asymptote is going to be at 3. y equals 3. So all you need to do is look at your leading coefficient. My leading coefficient here is 3 on the top, 1 on the bottom, 3 divided by 1 is 3. By looking at the leading coefficient, you can determine your horizontal asymptote. Then we got to figure out, are we below or above? You can do that by putting in values. But another neat clue that you can use is your intercepts. Our y-intercept shows up when x is equal to 0, and our x-intercept shows up when y is equal to 0. So let's look at the intercepts here. So the y-intercept is just f at 0, which is 3 times 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 3. It is 1 third. And to get your x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. So 0 is 3x plus 1 over x plus 3. Well, this is only going to happen when 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. The only way this entire rational function can be 0 is when the numerator is 0. So I just make 3x plus 1 equal to 0. And when th for 3x plus 1 to be equal to 0, x must be negative 1 over 3. So my x-intercept is negative 1 over 3. My y-intercept is 1 third. So let's just quickly plot that. My x-intercept is negative 1 third, so it's over here. My y-intercept is positive 1 third. It is up here. And I've got an asymptote here and an asymptote up here at negative th x is negative 3 and y is 3. Well, the only way I can have intercepts here and there and have these asymptotes is if it's curved along this way underneath. So then the top's got to be like that. So that's kind of a shortcut to figuring out our end behavior without plugging in large values. I apologize if the, this video seems a little choppier, more awkward than usual. I'm new to using this software and hopefully it becomes a little bit smoother as we go forward.